This is the drive that I have made hundreds of times over the Hurley Pass on the way to our cabin at Gun Lake. It's a bumpy dirt road and the snow stays year round. I like to drive at night because there are no logging trucks and the other vehicle headlights give me warning. I usually arrive at the cabin in the morning feeling tired but relieved to be away from the busyness of my life in the city. We rebuilt the cabin three years ago and now it is more Whistler than rustic. The logs from the cabin my father built in 1974 were integrated into the new building. My father built the original cabin by himself and without the use of any power tools. I will always remember him working on the roof in his yellow hard hat. Gun Lake and the cabin hold lots of memories. I spent my childhood summers here, was married here, and now watch my own children as they swim and have campfires. It's a weekend in October and my children are not with me. I'm here to bury and put to rest something that happened 25 years ago. 25 years is a long time, but each October my mind travels back to the fall after I graduated from high school. I had been working on building a deck for the cabin and my best friend Pat had come along to help. We're coming up to a, a spot where we can look down on the lake. Carpenter Lake sits where the Bridge River used to flow. In 1933, the provincial government decided that hydropower was needed to power Vancouver. They built a dam and filled the valley with water. Behind me is the Carpenter Lake Dam. It was completed in 1933 and in October of that year, the tunnel through which the Bridge River had been rushing was dynamited and the explosion plugged it and the water began to rise. Many people who lived in the valley had not wanted to leave, but they were forced out by the government. The sheriff and deputy of Goldbridge, the local town, evicted farmers and miners using force if they thought it necessary. Only one person managed to stay, a 70-year-old miner known locally as Old Man McGillicuddy. At one time, 10,000 people lived in Goldbridge they were miners and farmers, and now just 43 remain. The Goldbridge Cemetery, like our cabin, has recently been refurbished. It is quite popular with the tourists in the summer. Here at the edge of the Goldbridge Cemetery is an unmarked grave. It's here to commemorate Old Man McGillicuddy, but of course the body was never found. In the uh, 25 years since Pat disappeared, I've avoided water as much as possible, but especially in Carpenter Lake. psychiatrist told me that the only way for me to get over this fear was to confront it. And for myself and for my children, I have decided to camp out at the old mine. This is the same sign that warned Pat and me not to camp here. We ignored it then, as I am ignoring it today.
1930s, old man McGillicuddy had uh, developed his mind, so he was making a little bit of money. He had all the supplies to get core samples. And even though he wasn't rich, he was certainly making a living. Old man McGillicuddy had just finished this shaft when the decision to build the dam came through and he was given his notice of eviction. Some say he had just hit a rich vein of ore. Since the 1930s, the mine has been reopened a few times. Mostly by stock speculators trying to make it rich. There has been no gold found since old man McGillicuddy's time. The sheriff and his deputy knew that they had to get old man McGillicuddy out of his house before the water rose. So when the alarm sounded, they headed down the road to have a chat with him. When we camped here 25 years ago, the water was about 30 feet higher. And just the top of that tailing pile was visible. And on that tailing pile were logs and gnarled branches. It really looked quite eerie, and at night, you could just see the silhouette of those branches of wood. This is the foundation of Old Man McGillicuddy's cabin. When Pat and I camped here, it was completely submerged. My plan is to set up camp and stay the night. Perhaps I can bring closure to the nightmare that began 25 years ago. This is where Pat and I set up camp, right beside the uh, steam-powered drill. It was quite quiet that night, although there was a bit of a wind. After I set up camp, I plan to build a campfire and have a few beers. I haven't told this story for 25 years. Time is right. So it was just after graduation. Patrick and I had come up to the cabin to work on the deck. We'd been working pretty hard. And we decided that it was time for us to take a break. Do a bit of camping, we thought. And I knew that Carpenter Lake had a great mine site where we could go and camp out and do some fishing, drink some beer. So off we headed. When we got there, it was already getting dark. We took out our tent, set it up, built a campfire, and sat back and had a few beers. It was a quiet night. The wind was about the same as it is tonight. So around midnight, I woke up. Pat wasn't there beside me. And I heard down by the waterfront a little splashing. I got up and grabbed my flashlight and headed over to the shore. Couldn't see Patrick anywhere. Shone my flashlight out to the old the island of pilings. I saw Pat's head bobbing as he was heading out to the island swimming. And I shouted out, Pat, what are you doing? It's, it's midnight. Why